Oh, here we go. We got the brute in the field. It's time to see what this weed assistant can do. I have to admit, I have been spraying a little bit with him. Broadcast, we had some fields that were as green as that with weeds. And so we're just taking care of that first. But now we're finally in the ground where it's gonna shine. And that's this type of chem follow. See there's like, what? One there, 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 there. A couple over there, over there. But it's not a mat. <clears throat> That's where we're gonna save chemicals. We're not gonna be wasting chemical on areas like this, except for that little one right there. That area, because with normal spraying when you're broadcasting, you just put an average rate across the whole land and just hope that the few plants that are there get taken care of. With this, we're gonna see each one of those plants and we're gonna douse them with 12 gallons an acre. So, let's give her a shot, let's try it. This is my first time doing spot and spray with the weeded system, so let's wing it out. Right now we're in the command center, the cockpit, the cab. Turn on the weeded system. Now the weeded system is going to talk to the ISO, which would be our Raven over here. This is a Viper 4 Plus. So let's go to start. Customize the screen. Originally I had it horizontal. Decided to make it vertical. I like the way the stuff fits better on there. So I got my trimble down here and then my Viper 4 Plus up here. This one's just gonna be for guidance and and using my valves in the back, which I only use it for reasons I gotta turn on and off, but just guidance and my flow meter too. Eventually we're gonna combine all this into one, but for now, we're using this. So, weeded system. Let's check our nozzles. Should be a T-Jet 3.5, these are monster cone nozzles. Spot spay rate, uh, about 12.2 gallons an acre at 100% PWM, pressure 50, Ideal speed, 12 miles an hour. So I gotta go 12 miles an hour. Here's my boom. Each one of these orange triangles is a sensor. That's one of those green sensors down there. And every one of those sensors controls four, four nozzles. So there's four nozzles, four nozzles, four nozzles. There's 144 nozzles across this entire thing. Now, 120 feet, like $200,000 of hardware out there. We wanna take care of it. Let's turn on our sweet seven section, seven sensor, my bad, auto boom from Raven. Turn that on. Since city's 50, target height, I'm doing 26. And go. All right, we're now in auto boom mode. So now the boom is gonna try to maintain 26 inches from the ground, from the sensor height. The nozzles are about eh, two inches difference from that, but that's good. So center section's just about right. I got that at 29. Let's go line up, let's get our AV line set. And let's see if we can spot spray some weeds. All those green dots are nozzles that are firing on weeds. So those are detected weeds, this is as detected. So if you look out there, you can see it firing. Obviously there's more pressure along the fence line here, where the grass is, because the seeds and stuff blow in. So there's gonna be more growth there and that's what it's seeing right now. So it's taking care of those. And on this side, it's a little cleaner, but still, it's amazing, you look across, I don't, see a whole lot of plants out there, but uh, this begs to differ. Let's go with this monitor, there we go. So we're running seven gallons an acre right now at 48, 49 PSI, that's about right. 84 PWM, I could do a little faster, let's speed it up a little bit. Let's go 11 miles an hour. It was telling me 12 was a little fast, so we could go a little faster right here. They get in the 90s, there we go, there's 11. So we got 91, 93 PWM five gallons an acre. Not too bad. I only mixed up 500 gallons because I probably needed more, but we'll find out here after we finish this piece and go to the next. That's the hard part about learning the weeded system is there's no way to know how much chemical I'm gonna need because I don't know how many plants are out there, but that's a good thing. It just means you gotta drive back and get more chemical if you're a little short. But in the end, you're saving chemical. And that is awesome. So check it out. In this particular area, Zero gallons an acre. <laughs> in other words, we're less than a gallon an acre. It doesn't go into the decimals, I guess. But once in a while, you'll see it fire. So yeah, in this area, it is paying big time to run this system. Absolutely. That's a lot of chemical savings. See all this kosher growing here? Let's see what happens when we go over that. And 
on. <laughs> it's just, it's just nuking it right now. Look at that. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We're still getting it. Another really sweet thing about this setup with this brood, let's check out my RPM. Just under 1500, like 1450. Just sipping the fuel. Not working at all. And at this speed, at 11 miles an hour, you're not beating the sprayer up either. I usually don't spray this slow, but this is the speed I really should be spraying all the time. So now I'm being forced to spray this speed because that's how fast the weed assist can go. There's a time between when the nozzle or when the sensor sees the object, it goes, oh, hey, there's a weed. I see chlorophyll and it says, fire the nozzle and it fires. And the nozzle goes, Psh. the time it takes for that water to go from the nozzle all the way down to hit the plant while you're going is your speed limiter. So if you're going too fast, they go past that weed before that product actually is able to make ground contact or weed contact. That makes sense. So at the distance between these sensors are from the nozzles, my max speed's about 12 miles an hour. Now, if you put those sensors out, like say 10 feet in front of the nozzles, you could go probably like 50 miles an hour. I don't know, maybe not, I didn't do the math. But you can increase your speed exponentially. But then they hang way out on the boom and 12 miles an hour is a good speed for this kind of hardware hanging out there. So we'll just, we'll just stick with that. Well, looking good so far. Just gotta fill that in. Amazing how many weeds are there. Oh. Gives you a perspective. I'll zoom in on this. Not that far. Not that far. There we go. Pull that over. Look at that. All those green dots are plants that we don't want growing in this field. All right, let's take a look at our settings here. Our data. Field data so far, I've gone 0.8 hours, driven 9.4 miles, covered 95.7 acres, <clears throat> used 418 gallons, and my average gallon per acre is four gallons per acre. So that's saving 67%. Now, I would have, if I were broadcasting this field, broadcasting means put a blanket covered of product across the whole thing, blanket, product, blanket chemistry, would have done seven and a half gallons an acre. So we're running about four gallons an acre. So we're just under, we're just over 50% less than uh, what we would have done if I would have blanketed it reason also for that is the nozzles I have on here are these really 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 big T-Jet they're 3.5s they're a cone and they just nuke the ground with a whole big big spray they're really not the right nozzles for this type of cover that I have of weeds uh, if, if my weed density was a lot less like later in the year when it's gonna be when you got the one big plant here and then like 100 yards away you got another big plant there and another one there that's what that's for but I don't have a set of nozzles on me at this moment they're in the mail they're coming I just don't have them yet. So when they get here, I'll put them on. But for now, we're using a little more chemical than we normally would, but we could probably get that savings up in that 70 some percent at this point. And the best part about this is if I do have skips out there, it's not a big deal. Because I'm gonna come back in three weeks and spray it again with this system. And there'll be a lot bigger plant then, and it'll see it, and it'll nuke it then. Instead of coming back in three weeks and broadcasting the entire thing again with a full dose of product again, hoping to get those few that were skipped. So that's where your savings really starts compounding, is each operation. From the beginning of the year, it's dense, there's a lot of weed pressure, it takes a lot of product to get rid of it. So with each operation, one, two, three, by operation number four towards the end of the year, it's gonna be really clean out here. We're gonna be putting down like a gallon an acre, half a gallon an acre, or whatever. You'll fill up one go day and a half spraying. Isn't that great? There was an 8% chance of rain today. That little thunderstorm is all by itself, but I think it's coming over me. So do I try to finish? I got a little bit left. Yeah, let's finish. Looks like I'm driving to the tornado. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's just a nice little downburst, dropping a bunch of moisture. Not in our place, unfortunately. They could use it, but maybe there'll be another one in two days. To a hey, deer. Where are you going? I see you. Got it all done, let's go home. That worked out okay. All right, that's a nurse. first, nice first start of the weed in. I'm learning. I need different nozzles though. These ones put out a little bit too much, but we'll get that fixed soon. Cool. Get this done, then on to crop spraying. And we won't be able to use the weed necessarily on that, but we'll be able to use its, uh, its turd compensation that with all the solenoids and the nozzles. So that's one thing that the old sprayer version didn't have. So that'll work out real great. Why can't that be 
right here. Oh, we need that right there. That thing over here. And just like that, we're crop spraying. So I got it in broadcast mode. So we're just putting out seven and a half gallon work. This is spring wheat. This is uh, some of our better looking spring wheat, honestly. It actually just barely clipped a bit of a rain last night. That storm that uh, went over when I was spraying, uh, spot spraying at the system. So that's good. We got a little teeny bit of moisture in the ground here. So this will hang out a little longer. It looks a lot better than some other stuff, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, big piece here, good 300 acres. So it's taking a bit to get this done, but hopefully soon we'll have this wrapped up. Dad's been working harder with the patchy on the other side of the farm. So with both of us rolling, the chance we might get a last an acre spray today. And that would be really nice because there's some things happening to my house site starting this weekend. So let's get this done. You can see what I've done so far. This piece, this one, all the purple areas. I told it to applicate about eight to nine gallon work because there were a lot of weeds in those spots. So that's why there's a different color there. But the green is seven and a half gallon work across the board. Uh, pretty nice though. Really easy to be able to switch between gallons. So I need to put a little bit more down because it's got a little more weed pressure and I need to take care of it. Quick press a button and I've got it. And these power poles, oh, these power poles. Now they're terrible because they're not true north-south. I'm spraying true north-south. Those are, well, I guess this is magnetic. True, I think it's true. I Maybe mean, it's magne magnetic, I don't know, I should know that. These are off by about five degrees. So at some point here, if I'm not careful, I'm gonna clip that boom and destroy $10,000 worth of weeded sensors in one of those booms. Well, maybe not destroy, but at least bend up part of the boom. So, at some point here, I gotta start weaving in and out of them, and uh, it just takes a while, and it's a lot of work. Now there's a goat right there. Wow. He's got some size to him. Can't see him anymore. Oh, oh no. Oh, we got the boom in the way. He's gonna give me, oh wow, that is a nice goat. I'll give you guys a shot. Oh, he's running. Never mind. Okay, well, take my word. Here's some of that spring wheat on that new ground that we just took out of CRP. Looking pretty good, honestly. We worked it once with spades, worked it again sideways with spades, ran a sweep through it once, waited a year, came back, ran a sweep through it again, ran the land roller over it, and then seeded it. It's probably still rough. But that's what it takes to get land back into production. This brown stuff, we spray it out. That's the other half that's gonna go into hopefully winter wheat this fall. We get some rain. So we split half of it up the way it worked out with the program to be able to take it out. We had to take half of it out first and then the other half second. So this is gonna come out, or it is coming out, and that's gonna be seeded this fall. And that's some random hay bale. Well, this has been a really brief few acres of running the weeded system, so there's more coming. It's gonna shine here in the next operation. So when we get to that, there'll be a lot more coming. So expect more videos. I've also got some other cool features that we're gonna try. But Big Brute, running like a champ. This thing just runs like a top. Besides a couple leaks here and there, which is typical with everything we have, um, it runs awesome. I just love this thing. The Raven monitor, really nice. Compliments the Trimble well, but certain day I think we're gonna transition from that to just that. And we won't have this anymore, if that makes sense. And then, the new tires, they ride pretty good. Not complaining about that at all. Good traction, haven't gotten into much mud yet, so I don't know if I'll get stuck if I ever do, but I'm sure I will. And then these Millennium Booms. Man, they're nice. I know I'm all compliments right now, but especially booms, they make some stellar booms. The way they flex compared to those rigid iron ones that were on here, they just float. They take any little bump or impact that the truck might have and it just it just balances out through the whole boom. And the boom just doesn't really do much, it just kind of sits there and floats. And then that Raven 7 sensor auto boom system has been a miracle because there's no way I would be able to handle this 120 foot boom 25 inches from the ground at 14 miles an hour, 12 miles an hour, in uneven ground. I would have been dragging boom all day. And with this weeded system, it's critical you maintain a consistent height above the ground. So Raven, you've got quite an auto boom. Love it. I know some of you are upset that we didn't straight pipe it and left the muffler on, but 
I'm thankful we did because I ran it for a while without a muffler, just straight piped out the side of the turbo, and it is loud at about 2,000 RPM. It's not fun. So, yes, muffler is nice. And we found a place to put it instead of going under the truck, as you can see. All right, back at it. All right, big brute. Got a couple things we still got to do to it. Just as we're learning, you know, you don't learn stuff until you use it and you're like, oh, hey, that's a problem. We got to fix that. We'll tell you what I'm doing here. So we put cattle mats, which were great for the cushion for the boom. So it has something to, you know, not wear into the metal and uh, give it some support here. Well, anyways, with all that said, when the boom is fully racked in here, there's a times we've noticed where the boom will actually twist a little bit before it racks in and the top of that Millennium boom will catch right there. And see how it's tearing out the corner of this uh, really soft cattle mats? That's gonna be a problem. Eventually it's gonna rip through that whole thing. So I called up my friends at May West Manufacturing out of Minnesota who make all kinds of good stuff. Worked up this nice black poly wear strip. Isn't that sweet? So now I don't have to worry about it just tearing it like that rubber. So I just gotta get these on there. So I've got some self-tapping screws. I'm gonna pre-drill a little bit to recess them so that way these guys don't catch. And uh, we'll put those on there as the vertical stops. So that way when it gets hit that, it'll slide down poly and not really high friction rubber. Good. I think that'll work. I'll swing it up and try it, but this poly is so slick and smooth. It's gonna just fit right there, go zip, slip right down. And it won't chew up that aluminum. That'll be perfect. Let's fire it up. All right, drop her down. Beautiful. That'll work. Now, I do have an announcement to make. Big Brute. In all his glory, we can keep him that way before then. We'll be attending the Farm Progress Show in Decatur, Illinois this year. So if you guys are gonna be going to that show, make sure to stop by the Titan Tire booth and check him out in all of his big brutish glory with his OptiTorque tires. It's gonna be standing tall there. There's gonna be some other big players in the lot too though. So um, he might not be the big dog on the lot, but he's still gonna be the cool one, the unique one, the very mutant one. So come take a look, come see all of our crazy handiwork and which which job, chop, chop, job, work. And all those who helped us put this thing together, thank you guys. We appreciate it. Love this sprayer. Can't wait to go use it. So God bless. We'll see you in the next one. All right. Later. Later.